Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Fun Facts. Has anyone watched Mrs. Doubtfire? Well, that's what we're doing today. We're going to do uh, read over some fun facts of Mrs. Doubtfire. Um, I've only watched so much of it, which I might watch again. I'm also reading these fun facts without watching a lot of these movies. And then it reminds me, of, oh, I should watch this movie. I don't know if I, like, I, I think I would enjoy it. So we're going to get into some fun facts. And before we do, we're going to try, obviously, we got to go with snacks for a movie because who doesn't love snacks with a movie? If you don't, something's wrong with you. No, I'm totally kidding. Um, oops, nothing's wrong with you at all. But I found, so at the mall, our mall, there is a kiosk. This guy, he has different kinds of um candy and snacks so chips pops all from around the world that we don't really get here in canada excuse me so i thought there's these skittles but with gooeyness in the middle and i'm excited to try this so let's get into so let me try one of these and then we will start some fun facts so just give me one second here Okay, let's see what these are like. I'm not too sure if I'm gonna just try every flavor, but it looks like they're big enough too. So let's start with purple, my favorite, even though I should always save the best for last. I don't know what that is on there. It's another color probably. Yeah. Oh! Okay. So far, so good. There's like a... Lemon gooey. But... That one tastes very familiar. Like a different kind of candy almost. Okay, let's try the orange. Okay. You can tell it's a Skittle. Okay. But that one was not my favorite. Let's try the yellow. A little purple be in it. No, that's <laughs> not. That was right. It's like a lemony goo in this one. Oh, she choked on it. Okay. We have two more to try. And then I'll tell you the ones I rate from best, least to best, or best to least favorite. Hmm, it's all the same like goo in there too, it's not different goos. Okay, now for the red. Huh. I know exactly which one's my favorite. Who my least favorite. My favorite is purple, red, green, orange, yellow. I don't know why the yellow, why everything yellow seems to be my least favorite, but it does. It is. Let me know. Go try those. 
The purple was my ultimate favorite. It was the best one. It was not too tart or anything like that. Sorry, you hear my dogs upstairs. But let's get into some facts here. Okay, honestly, I need one more purple. Because I like the purple. <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. They are my favorite. But they all have the same yellow goo. So, I think you're eating the same flavors of the Skittles. But, I think you're getting the same gooey. Gooey in every one of them. They were all like orange or yellowy. Okay. Number so the facts about Mrs. Doubtfire. Number one, it's based on a novel. Some movies are obviously adaptations of novels, but you would be forgiven for having no idea Mrs. Doubtfire is based on the book. It's an adaptation of Anne Fine's 1987 novel Elias Madame Doubtfire. Fine is British is a British author, so perhaps her book had more cachet in her coma than across the pond. Number two, the movie is directed by a family film staple. Chris Columbus made his name by writing Gremlins, a movie considered family unfriendly, enough to help usher in the PG-13 rating. Then Columbus became a big success in the world of family entertainment before helming Mrs. Delphire, he directed Home Alone and its New York set sequel. Oh yeah, he did. The book author, The book's author had an actor in mind for the lead role, if Fine had her way, Mrs. Doubtfire would have had an interesting lead. Her first choice to play, uh, first choice to play Danielle Hilliard, aka Mrs. Doubtfire, was none other than Warren Beatty, or Beatty. It's hard to envision Beatty in or BT in a film like this in the 1990s. He was working on his own projects anyways, having established himself as a successful director. Well. I'm glad Robin Williams got the role. Next one. A TV star had two opportunities and took neither. Tim Allen had become a big success thanks to his stand-up career and his sitcom Home Improvement. He was apparently offered the chance to play Daniel and Stu, his romantic rival. Allen turned them both down. Robin Williams, who also produced, ended up playing Daniel while a pre-James Bond Pierce Brosnan played Stu. Uh, one future star, I didn't realize Matilda was in this too. Wow. Anyways, one future star, star unsuccessfully auditioned. Blake Lively, Lively has had a successful career in film and television, but every acting career involves fruitless auditions. When she was still a child, after Lively auditioned to play Natalie Daniels' youngest child, she didn't get the part as it went to Mara Wilson instead. It was Mara Wilson's debut. Mrs. Delphire was Wilson's first film, and her only other on-screen credit of that era was five episodes of Melrose Place. Wilson would go on to have a bit of a run as a significant child actor, starring in the remake of Miracle on 34th Street and Matilda. Wilson would eventually step away from acting and reemerge as a notable Twitter figure and writing or writer. She wrote a book in 2016 called Where Am I Now? True Stories of Girlhood and Accidental Fame. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, that someone else got that role over Blake Lively. Nothing against her, but some of these people deserve the roles instead. And I'm glad that Matilda or, um, what's her name? Mara got it. Next one. The character of Stu was tweaked. Originally, Stu was going to be more of a villainous character. However, Columbus thought it made him his dynamic with Mrs. Doubtfire worse. 
As such, they decided to make him nicer and more of a viable potential stepfather for his kids. Um, did you guys ever watch the Big Mama House movies? I thought those ones were good. I enjoyed those. Next one is um, the part the bartender had an in with the cast. The bartender in the pool scene is played by a man credited as Dr. Toad. He worked as a bartender at the time and opened a vineyard called Toad Ho Hollow in 1993. Dr. Toad real Toad's real name was Robert Todd Williams, and he was the half brother of Robin Williams. Oh, there you go. That works. That's awesome. <clears throat> okay. And moving on to some more facts. Do, 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 do. Okay, Lisa Jacob was expelled from school for taking several months off to film Mrs. Doubtfire. Lisa Jacob opened up the letter Robin Williams addressed to her high school principal requesting that she be admitted back into the classroom. Uh, did she? I'm curious. Robin Williams' own son didn't recognize him in the Mrs. Doubtfire costume. Director Chris Columbus and Robin Williams tested the believability of Mrs. Doubtfire, but Williams' own son didn't even recognize him until hearing his voice. Um, that's hilarious. That's really cool how, to the extent, and how far you could go without recognizing, um, without recognizing your own father in a woman's costume. Like, that's neat. It's really neat. Um, just like Hairspray, like John Travolta, he played the mom. Would you, I, I didn't know that for a couple years after it came out, I think, or a year or so. I didn't realize it was him. Okay. The hilarious scene when Mrs. Delphire's icing falls from her cake mask and drips into Mrs. Mrs. Selner's tea was not scripted. Because it was so hot on set, the icing unintentionally dripped from Mrs. Robin or from Robin Williams' chin and into the teacup. He continued on improvising by saying to Mrs. Selner, There you go. You've got your cream and your sugar now. Perfect. I love when things are just improvised and they're not on the, um, and they're not on the, um, and like they, they're, sorry, they stay on the, the, the show. Okay, the next one. Another hilarious blooper was when Mrs. Doubtfire's dentures fell into her glass during the birthday scene, uh, dinner scene. In this scene, Mrs. Delphire says Carp Dentum sees the teeth, which was completely unscripted, as it referenced one of Robin Williams' line from Dead Poet Society, Carp Diem sees the day. The next, the opening animated scene of Mrs. Delphire was directed by Chuck Jones, the legendary animator filmmaker Chuck Jones is best known for his work on Looney Tunes, Merry Melodies, and the opening of Mrs. Delphire later, the full version of Pudgy, Parakeet, and Grunge, the Cat was released as a DVD uh, feature. The film was shot entirely in San Francisco. The iconic 2640 Steiner Street house in Pacific Heights is the actual house where scenes from Mrs. Doubtfire were filmed. After the passing of Robin Williams, the landmark became a memorial where fans of actors left flowers, photographs, and letters. Oh. There was supposed to be a Mrs. Delphire sequel. Screenwriter Miss uh, David Berenbaum had permission to work on the second one, but the sequel is canceling following Robin Williams' tragic death. Oh, that would have been so cool to see the second one. However, I mean, you could have had a different actor, but I, I don't think it would have been the same. And of course, you don't want to take that. Um, you don't want to. You know what I mean? Like, think of it as it's easy to replace him because obviously it didn't sound like it was. Um, it kind of sucks in a sense, but can't do anything about it, unfortunately. All right, rest in peace, Robin Williams. He was seemed like a really cool guy, and unfortunately, things got the best of him. 
that I any I, I like we all think right. It could be totally wrong. Maybe he was sick. Maybe we don't know. We don't know what's going on in someone's brain, right? They're the only one. So, um, but my thoughts and everything. Definitely, I think about him once in a while, or I think about other actors like Matthew Perry, who just passed away. That one still blows my mind right now, too. Like, it's almost like a, a grief of losing Matthew Perry. I didn't even know him. And I felt like a, a little bit of sadness that he passed away. And he passed you know, away pretty young, 50, 53 or 54. There's still a chance that the film will turn into a musical in early 2015. Alan Menken announced that he was in the early stages of working on a musical adaptation of the movie in May 2016. However, he announced that the project had stalled out a bit, which that unfortunately does tend to happen. That would be cool, though, to see the musical. Again, I have to go rewatch the movie because I haven't seen it in a while. Um, I would like to watch it again. I, I, you know, I enjoy stuff like that. Not always, but sometimes when, um, when you go into disguise for the whole movie kind of thing, and then they find out who you are and why you're there and this and that. It's kind of neat. I don't know. I like it sometimes. It's kind of different. Okay. My breathing can be heavy at times, so I do apologize for that. So Sally Field, next one, and we'll do five more, and I think that should be good. Sally Field played the role of Miranda Hillard, the ex-wife of Daniel Hillard. Sally Field brought depth and warmth to her character, capturing the complex emotions of a woman caught between love and frustration. <clears throat> the film addresses themes of family, divorce, and the lengths of parents would go for their children. Mrs. Doubtfire explores the challenges and joys of family dynamics in a lighthearted and relatable way. Uh, Mrs. Doubtfire received an Academy Award for Best Makeup. The talented makeup team behind the transformation of Robin Williams into Mrs. Doubtfire was recognized with a well-deserved Oscar, absolutely, since his son couldn't even recognize who he was. Absolutely. The film soundtrack includes the hit song Dude Looks Like a Lady by Aerosmith. The iconic song perfectly captures the spirit of Mrs. Doubtfire and adds to the overall enjoyment of the film. And lastly, the house used in the movie as the home of Hiller family had become a popular tourist attraction. Fans of the film often visit the San Francisco house located in the Pacific Heights neighborhood. And... Um, okay, we'll do one more and then, or two more, and then we'll call it a day. And the last two, Mrs. Delphire was critically acclaimed, receiving positive reviews from both audiences and critics. The film's heartfelt story combined with Robin Williams, including performance, earned widespread praise. And lastly, the movie explores themes of identity and the masks people wear in their daily lives through the character of Mrs. Doubtfire, the film raises questions about authenticity and the lengths we do to hide our true selves, which is very true, actually. I could see that, and that's something we would definitely I want to go watch now because I'm curious about the movie. Again, go try these. They're interesting. Uh, the purple ones were the best uh, out of all of them. The rest just kind of ended up tasting the same or like a regular Skittle. The goo was just extra that probably a little unnecessary in my opinion but they weren't the the worst they were only like a dollar or something um at this kiosk as you can see here it shows like right there right here's the cost so you guys have an excellent excellent day let's go out watch some mrs doubtfire and enjoy the rest of your day bye now Oh, and rest in peace to Robin Williams.